is it possible to be reductionist? You know, because physicists and scientists in general love the reductionist type of approach. Can we make something that's actually simpler than the real numbers? And then analyze it in terms of addition, in terms of multiplication, and film. Okay, so there would be only one set. And if we're going to do addition, well, as I recall, zero plus zero equals zero. So that works. I'm going to freeze the video for just a moment and address the question of what should I call these numbers? Well, binary numbers would be zero and one. And it's not quite that. It's more zero or one, along with the idea of the superposition of zero and one, because that is fundamental to so much of quantum mechanics. So there's not quite a right name. Unary numbers are already taken for those little check marks you make, you know, to count up to five or ten. So it's a slightly different notion because it's not just zero or one, but their relationship to each other. And how about one plus one equals uh, two? Okay, so that doesn't quite work. So that's not going to be included in this reductionist approach. Now let's think about the graph for multiplication. All right, well, we know zero times zero is zero. Ah, but it's also true that one times one equals one. So which one's right? Oh no, they're both fine. <laughs> they're both perfect. And in fact, it's a little strange that there are these two because they don't have the same kind of quality. You know, if you just took all the other numbers and multiplied them by zero, oh, that would always get you back to zero. If you start at zero times any other number, mm, you never leave. But with unity, well, one times nine is nine, okay. So you could kind of like expand once you had one. You can't expand your, the, your, the possibilities with zero because zero is just this, this black hole of numbers. Whereas unity, well, that's, that, that can work. Actually, you can make a group with it because say nine times a ninth gives you one. And so you can just expand forever with unity. So that's very different. Okay, how about film? Hmm. Well, there's only going to be one frame. <laughs> you go. Uh, that's kind of like that, um, that film of the Empire State Building, that was eight hours um, of the same thing. Only this would go back to the beginning of the universe. That sounds kind of silly. Unless it's not. What could that actually be? And my thought on this is that that is here now. Now, I consider myself the center of the universe. And because I'm the center of the universe, I'm at zero, 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 zero. Cool. Now, I'm cool with you actually thinking of yourself as the center of the universe, zero, 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 zero. And now we have a question. How is it that you get to the next moment of your own life? Now, as a mathematical physicist type, I actually have to provide you an equation, an expression for how you achieve that really easy to achieve goal. Because not only does it work for you and for me, it also works for empty space. You know, there's an empty space right next to my head, and we seem to, it seems to be there <laughs> in the next moment of our lives. It's like, how do we all do this? And so my thought on this subject is that zero, 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 zero plus zero, 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 zero gets you back to zero, 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 zero. So this sounds kind of trivial. 
As a matter of fact, in that multiplication step that we have there, it's called the trivial group. And people think it's trivial because of its name. But I don't actually think it's trivial like at all. I mean, this is a core question in physics. How is it things continue to exist? They don't seem to put any energy into it. And that, that could be answered by the, the equation of zero plus zero equals zero. Because there is no energy involved. It just happens. Which appears to be how life, in fact, and non-life, like this area next to my head, also keeps on existing. So the trivial group actually may be a little bit more interesting than people give it credit for. All right. Thank you very much. Now, I usually don't add anything personal because I do theoretical physics, and <laughs> it's not the most uh, uh, personal story kind of uh, activity. I'm going to make an exception here because this video was about this improvement I made to uh, this representation of number theory, and I had some insights into how do I continue to live my life. And I did a wrap on that on July 16th, and on July 17th, they did uh, uh, open heart surgery on me to replace uh, a heart valve that has been bad since I was born. I had just two leaflets, and now I've got this bovine uh, one that's got three. And I can tell you the, the bottom line is it was a clear upgrade. Uh, I can walk more than 10,000 steps in a day. I'm not needing to go take a nap or no chest pains. It was really all a positive sort of thing. But of course, when you're going in for that sort of operation, you just wonder whether, like me, would I continue? And, well, I realized that my hydrogen atoms... <laughs> which are some 13 billion years old, born in the Big Bang, that would have continued on just fine. And so would have my oxygen and phosphorus and little manganese and, and iron. Actually, I don't know how many higher order sort of uh, atoms make up the human body, but there's certainly a lot of them. Uh, and those were born in the supernova sometime after the Big Bang. And so somewhere between, say, 10 and, and 4 billion years ago, uh, all those atoms, they would have been just fine. Ah, it's, it's the brain that my brain would have been, pfft, okay. Uh, so how do I deal with that, that idea that maybe I couldn't have presented this idea? Well, it really comes down to two cases. In the first case, this idea just has no lasting value. <laughs> Yes, it's possible. Uh, in fact, one, some could argue it's probable. Uh, and if that's the case, it's no big deal that I didn't get to put in the weak effort it took to do all the post-production stuff. Now, my own personal bet is that there is something of deep value to these ideas. Because you can see how the, the real and the complex numbers, which are used absolutely every day, uh, by theoretical physics that maybe they should be expanded to just be able to handle good old three-dimensional space right from the start without having to do anything else. Um, if that more complicated line is of deep value, then if I didn't present it, then some arbitrary number of years, somebody else would have figured out the same darn thing. As a matter of fact, this is something that is investigated time and time again. People run across these types of numbers and say, we should do more. Uh, that's been true since they were born back in, um, by Hamilton back in 1843. And every generation, one or two people says, hey, we should do more. <laughs> and I'm just continuing that tradition. And this 
This video will be of value to somebody who also thinks along those lines, whether those lines are true or not true. I also find the simplified story actually kind of fun too, because we've got these three different um, ways to represent the trivial group, 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 1 is 1. And you say, yeah, but I don't get it. <laughs> don't worry. It is, is research in progress. You're not supposed to kind of get it. You're supposed to go either the, it feels like nothing or it feels like a kernel of something. If I've gotten that far, that would be a very good thing. Uh, but physics, for some odd reason, is strange. And even that is strange because generation after generation we take the smartest of the smartest of the smartest of the smartest people and say work on fundamental physics and you go but aren't you trying to explain sin the simplest shit in nature <laughs> if you're explaining the simplest shit it should be simple why do we need the, such smart people doing this and now my perspective on that is that there's this this wonderful tension between these three different types of ways of representing the trivial group uh, because I'm the center of the universe Mr. Zero and you are too <laughs> I see you as a one and you see me as a one so who's right oh neither it's we have to somehow embrace all three of these groups as we all get older together by adding another zero which didn't feel like it got older it just kind of kept going right so I don't get it myself, but I feel like it's possible that this could be a reason why fundamental physics remains a deeply strange subject. All right, so what do I hope to accomplish? Do I hope that thousands of people are going to watch this video? The answer is no, because mm. that's the track record I've got. <laughs> I am not part of a physics community, and so I do this in my basement, and uh, we see what happens, uh, which is not a lot. But what I do is I sometimes focus on an aspect and say, that's not quite right, I'll just make a small improvement. And that's all I really did here, was I said, hey, I should think about zero and, you know, the the two sets being right next to each other so we can think of the delta much easier. And the other big improvement were, was the, um, the directional zeros that went from unity or minus one to zero. I never heard that idea brought up, you know, coming up with the full graph theory for just multiplying real numbers or multiplying uh, complex numbers. And it just feels like a richer way to understand numbers which are absolutely central to what physicists actually do. So that's my goal. My goal is not to win over the world. Nope, nope. It's just to make small steps forward so that if anybody else comes along and says, well, where should I start? I said, well, that's a good enough starting place. I'll, I'll take a few steps forward from there. All right. Thank you very much.